Audrey. So if you've been following me closely, then you know that my husband and I just got back from a trip to Okinawa, Japan. I realized when I was editing the day seven vlogs that I didn't vlog enough, um, definitely not enough for a whole video. So I thought that I would add on to this video, just kind of show you the parts that I did vlog in a little montage for the intro, and then kind of talk about the pricing for everything, since that was a question that I got a lot on my Instagram. My husband and I spent around $1,500 on this trip for everything, including the flights and the hotel and the rental car and the food and everything. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about how we did that. Um, I think that's really affordable for a week-long trip. You might not think so, you might think that it is, but because I see a lot of round-trip flights for that cost, I thought that it was a really good deal. And traveling is just something that I like to make a priority in my life. Um, we don't have any kids and we don't really have any other expenses other than rent and food and gas. So it's just something that we like to put our money towards, something that we like to do together and there's a lot that I want to go over, so let's just get into it. So for this trip, my husband and I spent about $600 round trip for the both of us, so it was about $300 each. And the way that I find cheap flights is by using three different apps. The first one is Google Flights, the second one is Skyscanner, and the third one is Travel Pirates. So each of these apps and websites are pretty similar. Um, all you have to do is put in where you are flying from and then your destination, how long you're going for, and then it will kind of show you what days are the cheapest to fly um, for round trip and when ways. Um, I actually use Google Flights the most. When I use Skyscanner, it's kind of just to figure out where in the world is the cheapest to fly, um, during what months. And then after I figure that out, I will kind of put in, I'm traveling from LAX to wherever I decided to travel or wherever is supposed to be cheapest at the time. And then I will find cheapest flights that way. But something that I do want to say is when you have specific days that you're trying to fly, that's when it turns out to be the most expensive. Um, I think my husband and I find the cheapest flights because we are kind of open. Our schedule is flexible. Um, so if it is cheaper to leave on a certain day, then we'll leave on that day. Um, and if it's cheaper to come back a certain day, then we'll come back on that day. And um, we try not to limit ourselves to when we can fly because when you get really specific about your dates, I find that it's really hard to find something affordable at that time. Skyscanner kind of works the same. It's just kind of the same deal, um, except that you can also just kind of put in everywhere and it will show you where it's really cheap to travel. And Travel Pirates is not really that similar. Um, it's actually just discounted flights to already chosen destinations and you can kind of look through them and pick out which ones you like and then you can book the flight for a really decent price. Second of all, hotel room. We decided that we wanted to spend less than $100 for every night that we spent in Japan, um, and we were able to do that by using the Booking.com app that I talked about in my day one vlog. I love that app for everything, honestly. <laughs> I already kind of talked about why I liked it. You can just kind of sort by the price. Um, you can have things to add free parking, free breakfast. Every hotel that we stayed in had free breakfast and some of them had afternoon snacks. That was just really good for us because we didn't have to spend money on another meal. And then two of the nights that we stayed out there, we actually partnered with a hotel, the Okinawa Marriott. Um, so that just made it really affordable. And I don't think that you have to be an influencer to partner with a hotel or even a travel agency to help you cut the cost down for hotel rooms or tours. Um, I think they work with photojournalists, I think they work with photographers, videographers. It's all about kind of seeing what works for your circumstances. Another thing that I want to talk about is transportation. So when we were traveling Okinawa, we decided to get a car because the public transportation was not right for the things that we wanted to do. We wanted to go up and down the island, not really stay in the city area. So we ended up finding a car for $200 for the entire trip and we had an eco-friendly car. So we only spent $40 on gas overall. That really worked with us, really worked for our situation. Um, some places you can just get by by walking a lot or by using the train system. They didn't really have that where we were, so we ended up getting a car. 
as I said before, every place that we stayed had free breakfast and some of them had afternoon snacks. So we really did not spend that much on food or snacks <laughs> overall when we were outside of the hotel. I want to say that we spent less than $100 just because we really made use of the free breakfast buffets that we had every morning. Um, and I want to say when you travel, I find that eating the local food is your cheapest bet when you're traveling. I find that when you try to eat things that are maybe more Americanized or not something that the locals eat, something that has to be imported, then that's when it starts to get pricey. The last thing that I want to talk about is tourist activities and touristy souvenirs. So obviously a lot of money goes into the type of activities you do and the souvenirs that you bring back with you when you travel. I honestly don't like to fall into those tourist traps whenever I travel. I mean, there are some things that I will buy that I think are cute, but I find that doing those touristy things are where it gets really, really expensive. I try to stay away from those tourist traps um, just because the price just doesn't really seem worth it to me. I would rather go out and just find something to do locally, um, try to talk to the locals and try to find out what I can do without a guided tour or anything like that. Um, something that I don't have to pay for. I really like to do free things when I travel and just kind of try to experience the culture as much as I can. And then when it comes to souvenirs, I don't really buy souvenirs when I travel. I will keep my train tickets and my plane tickets and museum tickets, just things like that, little things that I find along the way and that ends up being my souvenir. So I think that's gonna be it. I hope that answered all of your questions for all of you that had questions about budget and pricing. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the vlogs. I really enjoyed making them. I hope you enjoyed the travel diary that I made. I. I think that's my favorite video, so I really hope you guys enjoy that as well, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!